If you guys remember last time, we built this monster of a system back here. In fact, there's two systems in that one box. The Fantex N3 Lux 2 houses a gaming and streaming setup with absolutely no problems. And I showed you guys how that performs when capturing your gameplay footage onto the streaming system that's down below. However, there was some talk in the comments and a very specific question with a lot of upvotes asking me to show you guys how to enable this capturing and streaming using this dual setup, how to use OBS, how to set up maybe a stream for Twitch or for YouTube. So that's what we're gonna go over today. This is gonna be a fairly high level overview of how to set up OBS. We're not necessarily gonna get down into the minutia, all the details and you know all the crazy settings and stuff that OBS does feature. However, I wanna show you guys how to get this up and running and how to put your first stream out there for the world. So as I said in the intro, just please keep in mind that this is not going to be the be all and end all of OBS tutorials. This is a complicated program that has a lot of powerful features and a lot of things you could do with it. We're not gonna get into things like overlays or uh, audio or anything like that. We're just basically gonna show you guys how to set up your stream, how to get a stream key, how to broadcast out to Twitch or to YouTube, and a few basic video settings that you guys are gonna need to know. So let's quickly review the hardware that we're using. But just keep in mind also that you don't necessarily need to have a dual system like this in order to make streaming work for you. Most people are just working off of one system. But the principles that we talk about are gonna be applicable if you have both systems in one box, if you have two systems in separate boxes, or even if you just have one system. Just keep in mind that you're gonna need a source, you're gonna need a capture system of some kind, and then you're gonna need to integrate those and use OBS to push the footage out to Twitch or to YouTube. Just to give you guys a quick refresher on the hardware that we are dealing with here, this is a dual system build inside the Fantex Enthu Lux 2. The top system uses a Ryzen 7 3700X, an XFX 5700 XT Raw 2, and this is what we're gonna be gaming on. The bottom system is our capture system. This is a Ryzen 5 3400G. It uses the Elgato 4K60 Pro capture card to record footage, and the whole thing is housed in one box, which is great, but let's show you how exactly it works. So here we have the back of the rig, and it, much like the rest of my basement currently is kind of a mess because I haven't done any cable management back here. But I just wanted to show you how the video out works when you're dealing with a single box that uses both a gaming system and a capture system. Now remember our capture system is down here and the Elgato 4K60 Pro comes out right back here. But we're gonna be gaming on the upper system. So the video out from the upper system, from this 5700 XT right here, is gonna to have to somehow make its way into the capture system and then out to our monitor. And the way it does that is it uses a pass-through. So the video out on the, uh, on the main system's graphics card comes out here via HDMI and then comes down here into the input on the Elgato 4K60 right here into the in. The Elgato has a pass through built in. So you see it has both an in and an out. So the input is where it's gonna draw its signal from and what it's going to capture. And then the output is what's going to display to the monitor. So we have another HDMI coming out of that and going into our main monitor. But we also need a way to be able to see what's going on in the screen of our capture system. So for that, we're using the video out of our 3400G, which is currently being blocked by this, I guess right here, we see the DisplayPort cable plugged into the video out. And then that comes out of here, and goes all the way across to here. So this monitor over here is what's going to display our video out from our capture system so that we could see the operating system, we could start OBS, we could do our configurations, and then we could actually display what is being captured and then our gaming is actually gonna happen here because of the pass through. All right guys, so I am editing this video right now and I noticed that the footage of the capture system that I shot with a camera pointed at the monitor 
could have probably been a little bit better. Everything on the screen is still perfectly readable and you should be able to follow along with what I'm doing. It would have been better if I set up a capture of the capture system, but this was a very impromptu video. I it was not on the schedule, did not plan to do it, um, but it seemed to be something that you guys wanted. So I tried to set it up and get it done as fast as possible. So I do apologize that that part of the video where I'm filming the screen could probably be a little bit better. Hopefully you guys can still follow along and hopefully you guys still get something out of it. Because we have our hardware already set up so that the feed from the gaming system is already piped into the 4K60 of the capture system, we already have the feed going where it needs to go. We just need to make sure that OBS sees it. And the way that we do that is you have to add a scene that specifically says, hey, look at the 4K60 for what we want to capture. So initially when OBS starts, you will have something over here that says scene. You could rename these, you could add some. But scenes basically are how you're gonna switch between uh, different views for your viewer when you are streaming. So one scene could be capture card, one scene could be camera, one scene could be picture in picture with your face in the corner of the, of the, of the uh, screen, whatever you want it to be. And you can rename these if you want, you could right click and rename them. But we're just gonna leave it scene right now because what we wanna focus on is how to get the image from the gaming system into OBS. And the way you do that is you have to add a source for video to your scene. So in order to do that, you hit the little plus down here, and because we are working with an Elgato, which is a video capture device, you just hit video capture device. So you're gonna create a new video capture device, and you can rename these as necessary, and then the drop down here will automatically show you what you have available. And what we have available is the 4K60. So when you do that and when you add it, it automatically will bring in whatever feed is going to the 4K60 from the gaming system. You can choose your different frame rates. You could choose your different resolutions. To be honest, when you're first starting out, it's probably just easiest to leave it at default because it's gonna detect you know, what you sh really should be displaying or what is the ideal um, input from your video source. So that's what you're seeing right now. Right now we're outputting a 1440p signal to the capture system and that's what it's picking up. So now that we have our video signal from our gaming system on our streaming system, we have to now push it out to the world. Before we do that, we wanna do a couple settings checks first because the settings are what's gonna enable you to change the resolution that you stream at, as well as the resolution that you capture if you just wanna record uh, to a local disc or something along those lines. It also enables you to change audio options, and this tab right here, this stream tab, is what is you're gonna use to tell OBS to stream to a specific place. So we're gonna to get to that in a second, but let's first look at the other tabs. So the video tab, you can see that the base resolution is 3840 by 2160 because I'm actually capturing from a 4K monitor and the output is gonna be 1440p. So this is what, if we wanna stream, or we want to capture, this is the resolution that we're going to be capturing at. And you could easily change that just with a drop down. If you want to capture at 1080p or stream at 1080p, it's a little less strenuous on your system. Um, and obviously the files are going to be smaller. You could also change the frame rate that you capture at. You can capture up to 60 frames per second at 4K with the, with the Elgato. Some capture cards are going to be different and maybe only allow you to capture up to 30 frames per second. But the one that we have right now, you can capture up to 60 FPS. Output is definitely something that you guys are gonna want to get familiar with. You could leave this on simple, uh, or you can change it to advanced. When you're in the simple tab, you wanna make sure that if you're working with a discrete GPU, which I would imagine most of you guys are, the encoder is set to hardware. If you leave it on software, this is going to put an extreme load on your CPU. When you leave it on software, basically you're gonna max out your CPU, it's gonna be running at 100%, your captures or your streams are gonna look like garbage. But if you put change it to hardware, it actually utilizes the additional hardware inside, in this case, our 3400G. So it's actually gonna be leveraging the integrated graphics processor to help us out, basically, to offload some of that processing so that the CPU cores can be better utilized for pushing frames out to Twitch or to YouTube or whatever it is. And then let's talk about bitrate. 
The reason bitrate is important is that this is the amount of data that you are sending up to YouTube or to Twitch. The higher the bitrate, the better quality video you're going to have on your stream, but also the more data that your internet throughput and your CPU are going to have to handle. If you crank this all the way up, you're gonna have issues with lag, you might drop some frames. To be honest, 5,000 is probably pretty high for a lot of streams. I see a lot of settings, 3,500, 4,000 or so. I probably wouldn't go below 2,500. Uh, and that, that will create a noticeable drop off in quality. I keep mine at 5,000. This is what I stream at when I do my live streams to YouTube and when I do game uh, capture footage. 5,000 I've found to be pretty good. And we haven't had any, any issues so far with, um, uh, with this system with dropping any frames or anything like that. So 5,000 seems fine. I, I did some pre-testing at 5,000 here and everything was working well. If you are having problems with your stream, if you are experiencing some lag, try dropping the bit rate down first. Uh, that would be my first point of attack and usually it will solve a lot of problems, especially if you don't have quite as fast of an internet connection. This can really help you. And going from 5,000 to 4,000 isn't really gonna create a noticeable difference to your viewer. Uh, so try that first, but bitrate obviously is something that's important. You're gonna have to make sure that you keep an eye on. And down here for recording settings, this is if you're gonna just be recording locally, where you want them to go, also what format you want them to be in. I like MP4s because they're easy to work with in Premiere, but default is FLVs. You could record in uh, MOV files, MKV files, whatever you want. I just leave it on MP4. Um, and then the, uh, the recording quality. So I usually use high quality. You could use lossless, but again, you're dealing with enormous file sizes and increased um, uh, processing time. And now let's deal with stream. Stream, the stream tab is where you're going to tell OBS where to put your video output signal. So most people that are streaming are either streaming on Twitch or on YouTube, there's Mixer in here as well. But when you choose one of these two, so right now we're gonna pretend that we're streaming to Twitch the easiest way to get what's called a stream key is just to connect your account. And when you connect your account, you hit the connect account button, it'll bring up this login screen. Well, I've already logged in, so it didn't bring that up for me, but it brings up a login screen, you enter your Twitch credentials, and then it automatically, Twitch will automatically tell OBS what the stream key is. The key is what indicates what channel OBS is pushing video output to. Now, when you, when you first start up and when you wanna see if your stream is gonna be healthy, you could use something called enable bandwidth test mode. When you do this and you hit okay, see it brings up your Twitch windows, your stream, uh, your, like your chat and stuff. But when you are using the, the test mode, it's not actually pushing your signal out. To, it's not broadcasting live, but it is simulating broadcasting live. So this enables you to hit the start streaming button and hit yes. And then this simulates what would happen if you were to go live and it shows you in the bottom right hand corner what your stream stats are and if the stream is healthy. So if you see a green box down here that indicates that the stream is healthy, it shows you your bit rate, it shows you your, how, how long you've been live, in this case 18 seconds, and it shows you your dropped frames. Drop frames are really important because if you're dropping a lot of frames, that indicates that your CPU is not able to properly keep up with the video feed and the stream as a result will suffer. If you see zero drop frames, that means that your system is doing a good job and the feed should be smooth uh, depending on, I guess your internet, connect, as long as your internet connection can handle it. It also shows you your CPU percentage. So right now we're using 8.8%, which is 10.9%. Th this goes up to as high as maybe in the 20s sometimes, depending on um, what you're streaming and how many you know overlays and stuff you have. But right now for just we're just streaming Call of Duty um, and we wanna see how that looks. And we see a CPU utilization of 9.6% and zero drop frames. That means that we are doing a great job, that our stream should look good. So let's hit stop streaming and I'll show you how to do YouTube now. So we're gonna go back into our settings and we're gonna to go to stream and we're gonna change the service that we're streaming to to YouTube slash YouTube gaming. Now, 
The same thing as with Twitch, you need a stream key in order for OBS to know where to put your stream. And every channel has its own stream key and I'll show you guys where to find it. So here we are in our YouTube studio dashboard. I'm gonna use the classic dashboard because the beta is trash. So we're gonna go over to live streaming and a lot of this is gonna be blurred out. I'm sorry about that, but we're gonna go over here to live streaming. We're gonna click on that. And then we are going to set up an event. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an event. We're gonna say we wanna go live at, at yeah, 5 p.m. That sounds good. We're gonna make this uh, private so people don't think that I'm actually going live. And the title is gonna be uh, streaming. Yeah, streaming system test. Okay. So we're gonna create the event. Hopefully this isn't going live on my channel right now. And then it pushes us to this screen. Now down here you see a single use stream key or reusable stream key and you can choose. I always use single, stream, single use stream keys. You can use reusable if you want. Um, basically you do this if you have like a recurring weekly stream or something like that. But once you choose one of these options, single use stream key, it will generate for you a key that you could use to push to your channel. And again, this is gonna be blurred out, sorry about that, but the stream name is where you find your stream key. So you're gonna copy it, you're gonna come back into OBS, you're gonna hit paste, and you're gonna hit apply. Now this is going to tell OBS that this stream key is your channel, and you're gonna hit start streaming. Once we've done that, we could go into our live control room where it's gonna give us some analytics on the stream itself. It's gonna say stream status, and it's gonna show us if we have a good stream or not, and we do, we have a good stream. The health is good. So right now I'm previewing the stream, which I don't wanna hit start streaming because this will push it out to my channel, but by previewing the stream, you could see what it actually looks like. And this is on a little bit of a delay and for some reason, Okay, great. We have all kinds of errors happening. That's lovely. Okay, I don't know what happened there. I just refreshed the page. But so now we are streaming out to YouTube, us playing some Call of Duty. And Indy is Indy's running around with a toy. So if you hear some snorts, sorry about that. But let's jump into the campaign and see how this looks. So we've started the campaign and this is gonna be on a delay. So I'm watching myself over here on the... Uh, on the screen and it's uh, quite distracting to be honest with you. <laughs> this looks good. Um, the preview window is only available in 360p, but uh, it shows your preview of what your stream is. And if you're streaming out at 1080p, this will show you if it looks terrible or not. Um, so our stream status is good. Um, everything looks looks okay. Uh, OBS is, we're still under 10% CPU utilization. We haven't dropped any frames. And um, I don't know, it looks good to me. So I hope you guys were able to take at least a little bit away from this tutorial on how to set up OBS for maybe your first stream where you just wanna get some gameplay footage out there for everybody to watch. Like I said in the intro, of course, there are a lot more in-depth tutorials about how to get the most out of this program. However, I just wanted to show you guys the basics and I think that I've done that. But if you have any questions about OBS, let me know down below in the comments. Hopefully I can help you guys out. And as always, thanks for watching and get subscribed and I'll see you guys next time.